What's happening guys? Brian here. <clears throat> Just wanted to kind of show you a little project I've been working on. This is the armrest out of the 89 F350. It's kind of tacky and cheesy looking. It's got this big crack right here. So every time you lean on the, the thing to go over to the other side to grab something, it just does this number. So it was really just getting on my nerves. Besides it looked nasty, it looked just it looked stupid. So, um, oh yeah, but before I totally, these also were the, are the cushions that go on there, right? So I fabricated this metal one up today and I also used some dump truck parts on there. Those are the lock rings and the locking washer for the one of the axles. But anyways, I'm not going to touch this because it's still kind of wet. But I'm basically reupholstering these. I'm going to add some black leather vinyl stuff. It's going to look pretty sweet on there. So I figured I'd show you guys, you know, how I do this. See if I can set you guys up somewhere where you can kind of watch this. Let's see, maybe right here. Okay. Now, if there was some way to keep you guys from falling. Okay. Now you can kind of see this is what I'm working on right here. I'm not exactly sure. How I'm gonna do this yet? I mean, I've done a few seats. I haven't done a whole lot. Um, right here, basically, I what I did was I folded this in and then folded that up, right? And it gave it kind of a clean looking, just kind of a clean fold right there. And that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm gonna cut some of this extra off because obviously we don't need all this extra what are you guys up to can't really read the comments at this angle but oh, come on, you're a pain. these are shop scissors not fabric scissors big difference difference is, is these are used to cut everything and anything they come in contact with. Fabric scissors, as my wife has, are only for cutting fabric. Because if you cut anything else, you'll rip your head off. Okay, so I got that. Now I'm just going to fold this kind of in like that. And I'll staple this right there. And then I'll take this one and fold it over the top. All right, there we go, just like that. Okay. I like to have lots of staples in here. That way it doesn't tear out. It's a lot, lot less likely to tear out. All right, let me catch up on some of these. What's up, work life? What's up? Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Here, let's tilt this down just a hair more. Yeah, so what do you guys think of the new uh, 
So that's gonna be my new armrest right there. I fabricated that out of some steel. This is what the old one looks like. It was kind of crappy. And this, these are not, these are comfy. Sorry about that. These are comfy, but they're ugly. And then this has this big crack in it. So I'm just trying to, you know, figure something out that would look a lot nicer. And this is definitely going to look premium on there. Yeah, I made a new console. So that's going to take the place of the old one, right? All I'm doing is just wrapping it with this. It's like a vinyl fake leather, but it's really nice. I mean, it's, it's basically like a leather, but it's I think it's called vinyl. But I like it. I like it a lot. A lot better than this. This is kind of like a velvety, like a velvet. But, I mean, come on, like... This is not going to last with me because it's going to get filled with dirt and grease and oil. And this, you can just wipe it off. This, you're not wiping that off. So, this fabric has got to go for me. It just it just isn't doesn't fit my lifestyle. <laughs> Let's see if I can set you guys up like that. Okay. Now what I gotta do is I gotta figure out how to fold this. So I think the last time I folded this down and then that up like that. Let's see. Just trying to figure out how to fold this so it looks nice. There we go. And the other thing is, you don't want it so bulky either, because you get it too bulky, and then next thing you know, it looks, it's poking up on the seat, so you don't want it bulky either. How does that look? That looks pretty sweet right there. Oh, out of staples. And this is just like a basic, like, normal stapler. Like, it's like a roofing stapler. These are T50 staples. They're basically roofing staples. <laughs> but they work for upholstery. I mean, these work pretty good. Because they're not very long. And they're really sharp, so they go in pretty easy okay let's continue on here oh that one didn't go down all the way there we go now let's cut this extra off I don't really know if we need to cut this off or not, but I'm going to anyways. You want to get some of this fabric off because if you don't, then it'll be all poofy when you go to screw it down. There you go. There, check that out. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. 
This should be way more durable too, I'm thinking. I got uh, 60,000 miles, 65,000 miles is what it says on the new truck. Let's see, is this thing dry yet? Nope, still, still kind of, you can see where it kind of left like a little fingerprint almost. It didn't leave a fingerprint, but you could tell if I left my finger there any longer, it would have. Anyways, this is going to sit right, basically like that. Dang, that looks good. Hoo-wee, that's going to look smoking. And then there's my cup holder right there. And what I'll do is, in the center part right here, I was going to put a little box, and I still might. I, I might fabricate like a little rail like that I can screw on there. Maybe drill some holes in it or something. That'd be cool. But first, I was thinking of actually cutting this cutting a square out and then dropping it down an inch or two and then filling it in with, you know, another piece of metal. So it was inlaid in, but I don't know. That's just a lot of work. And to get it to look just right, it's really tough. But what do you guys think? So this, yeah, sweet. We can do a side-by-side -side comparison. There you go, fellas. And that's our side-by-side -side comparison. I think what I'll do is I'll stick like a little uh, rubber, some sort of rubber, you know, so I can set my phone down there and it won't slide off. They make those rubber pads. They sell it like O'Reilly's and stuff, like a black rubber. They kind of get fuzzies on them every once in a while and you just clean them. What do you guys think? I was going to do something like that, but that's just so complex and just, it's, I didn't have a lot of time. So I just did that flat. What do you guys think of the new console? We're going to reupholster this other pad right here. And that's going to go on the other side. Well, this basically was a pillow. We had we had a black pillow. I made this pillow for uh, because I have I reupholstered. Let's see, I reupholstered these a long time ago. These stools, and I also reupholstered a seat with this same vinyl, and I had some left over, and I made a pillow out of it, and then I was. And then I got this idea of doing the black leather on that. Because it's just so much easier to clean. Anyways, it looks way nicer than that fuzzy stuff. We got some good news, guys. Amazing news. The duplex is this close to being sold. We're almost ready to close. Right? We're almost doing the closing. Should be closing, uh, what is it? I think it's gonna be closing November 6th, I think is our closing date. So, super excited about that. How you guys like this shirt? Only you can prevent socialism. <laughs> Let's see. Hope you guys don't mind me working while I'm talking to you. So we should be closing any day now. The 6th, I think, is our closing date. So, super excited about that. We've already started the process of uh, building our new house. We're going to go with Highline Homes. That one didn't go in all the way. And so basically what we've done so far is we paid Highline Homes 
we wrote him a check and said, here, you know, get the plans going, you know. That's basically all we've done so far for the home. Basically, when you do something like this, you just got to kind of just dive in and just do it. You know, because if you overthink it too much, it gets complicated. So sweet. When I'm done, I'm so excited for this. I like to get it kind of snug, and then I go back and hit in between all the other staples because you can't just do them all super close because then what happens is if you do them super close by the time you get to the end there will be a wrinkle that you have to try to get out What are you guys up to this fine Sunday evening? almost like just wrapping a present. To yourself. Cut the extra off. There you go. You got that. The reason I left this other fabric on here too is, you know, it makes it that much more thicker. Less likely to poke through, I'm thinking. You know, I don't know. Maybe not. It gives it more cushion, if nothing else. Gives it more cushion if nothing else. And you really want to put your weight in when you're stapling. You really do want to put your weight in on this thing because you want it to go in the first time. Thank you. 
can almost not use enough staples. Okay, so see how I get the staples are kind of far apart? There's no wrinkle. See, this is kind of a small wrinkle. Right here's a small wrinkle too. But if I were to go super close together the whole way, by the time I got here, this wrinkle would be twice that size. So, just a little tip when you're doing some reupholstery. I think I get this handiness from my grandpa. He's always doing something handy. He reupholstered. He had a uh, 49 Ford. It was a sedan. He reupholstered the whole thing. I never got to see it when it was reupholstered, but he did the whole thing. He reupholstered the whole thing, apparently, he said. And then it kind of went to junk. After a while, that's what he told me. Kind of a shame. Anyways, there you have it, folks. It just Got the second one done. How much? Still, still kind of damp. But I can set these on there because these are. They're going to get screwed on, anyways. So if it messes up the paint there, well, tough. It's going to get messed up anyways because I'm going to screw through it. What do you guys think of the new console? I'm not done yet. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make... It's going to be probably about the same height as this. It's a, I'm going to make a steel square. And it's going to come up and probably be, you know, eighth inch thick or something like that. And then I'll put little, like, probably like two tabs, maybe on the front and the back. And I'll just screw it into that. It'll look pretty sweet. And then, you know what else I could do? I could weld like a... I could screw like a little box underneath and make like a little piggy bank or something. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> just kidding. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty sweet. Compared to this plastic thing that's all you know look at this like they screwed it in so tight that it warped the plastic and then this was broke and they thought they what they did was they had a little piece of metal they glued to it to hold it together it did not hold it together it looked like crap And you can tell it's started to crack upwards because every time you apply pressure to this on the seat, it would do the same thing. Right? And that's right where your armrest is for the driver. So we made this metal one up. So interesting story for those of you guys that are watching. I don't know if you can tell. But these are lock rings, lock nuts for a uh, rear axle of a dump truck. If you look close enough on this top one, you can see the threads are almost gone.
you can see the threads are almost gone, right? This is what holds your rear at one of your axles on. That's basically what holds your axle in. First, you got this lower one that screws on, and then you have this lock washer, right? See the holes in it? Well, right where that bolt is welded, right about there, there's a little pin that sticks up that the bolt is welded to. That goes in the lock washer, right? And that washer also has like a little notch key in it. See that? And then this goes on after that and it tightens it up so it can't back off. Well, I had to redo uh, one of my wheel seals because it was leaking everywhere. And I took this, I took the dump truck apart and this one was not even attached. It was just rolling around in the, in the axle itself, in the axle housing, which is pretty crazy. So I kept it because I thought it was kind of cool. You know, like how did my axle not fall off? And you can see all the threads are pretty much gone on it. The other one, there's still threads on it. You can see the threads on it still. So my idea behind this cup holder is there's a bolt right there that's threaded up. It makes it tight up like this. I can loosen it a little bit and then this right here can swing around. So if you got like a cup that's really small or something, you know, you could put it to one side and it would kind of grab it so it didn't fall out. I don't know. This is kind of, that's how that sits. Kind of cool. I was thinking of just doing a whole bunch of bolts in each one of those holes and welding it down, but I, I didn't. What I could do in the future is I could loosen up that nut, swivel this out, put bolts in all those holes and and nuts on every single one of the bolts and then swivel it back and it would look, you know, you'd have a, a bolt going down. That'd be kind of cool too. Maybe I might do that. What do you guys think? Should I do that? Put bolts in all those holes? Like some, they'd have to be like stainless or something. Stainless steel would look sweet. I wish this thing was dry already. It's not 100% perfect. When I made it, you know, you can tell the black paint. You can see the irregularities in the steel where I was hammering on it to bend it down and stuff, but it still looks pretty sweet. Pretty sweet for a redneck, at least. see I tightened it too tight it's too tight but that nut right there you can loosen that up and then this middle ring will swivel well, let me zoom out here I wish I could screw those two cushions on right now, but the paint's wet still, so. I had to have these curves in it right here. See how this has the curve too? Because that's where the hinge is. And I guess I could have trimmed this off at the same level 
all the way across, but you really can't. I mean, when the seat is up or down, you don't really, you can't really see that anyways. But when it's down like this, you can see the back. I was going to paint this. Oh, I did paint it blue. And then I painted the cup holder orange. But then I'm like, nah, that won't go good in my truck. I want to make something blue and orange. Or orange or blue or something, you know. But I just, I don't know what yet. I was going to do this. I had it painted blue and orange. But I'm like, no, that looks stupid. So... Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in, checking out my new console. I got a few videos coming out. But Blake, it's winter already, dude. It's winter. Well, so here's the thing. So on my dump truck, I could have worked Saturday and today, um, but one of the synchros in my transmission went out. So whenever I'd go from low range to high range, it would go, you know, Unless I was going very slow when I switched from low range to high range. And uh, so I got that in the shop. They're doing that. It should be out Monday. I'm getting a whole rebuilt 13 speed for basically four grand. Yeah, works, works slowing down. It's definitely slowing down. But, you know... I'm kind of happy because at the same time, like, so we're selling our house. We should be closing on the 6th with selling this duplex. We're going to rent it for a year. We already got a lease agreement for a year to rent from them. And while we're renting, we're going to be building our house. And we already started the process to build it. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Three years ago, Three years ago, and you can go back, and in every single one of my videos, you can see this right here on the wall. This is a goal my wife and I set. Our goal was in five years to build this house right here. And we even had the price tag up on the top. 103000 That's what it was going to cost us to build it. That's our house right there. Not a big house. It's only 1,200 square feet. Live like no one else, so later you can live like no one else. Anyways, we set that goal for five years and we're gonna accomplish it in four. Boom. It's just, you gotta set goals in life. Because if you don't set goals, and you don't constantly push yourself, you're not gonna go anywhere in life. Yeah, it, and you know, you know what's even more crazy, Blake, is we're almost gonna have no mortgage. That's what's even crazier. <laughs> I can't wait. No mortgage, that's, that's what I'm excited for right there. We're making basically 100, 100 grand on this duplex. And then the total build of the house is going to be about 175, roughly. So we'll have like a $70,000 mortgage, which is not that much for a duplex or for a house. So we could pay that off in three years if we really hustle. If we really eat that top ramen, and then we'll be having steak and eggs for breakfast and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Lobster for lunch. Yeah. Yeah, 70K is all we're going to owe, dude. I, I just can't wait for that, man. That's, it's going to be so sweet. You know? And me and my wife, we have worked so hard. You know? It's just day and night, day and night, you know? Yeah. 
Oh, dude, you better believe it. <laughs> it's going to be documented, Blake. You can guarantee that. It's going to be documented. Uh, and the lobster, too. Can you believe it? So, I have never ate lobster in my whole life. Never. Never. So, I don't even know what lobster tastes like. I don't even know if I like it. I heard it's kind of like shrimp, but... I guess we're going to find out a few years from now. Yeah. Yeah, no, the whole family's going to be eating it. <laughs> Another thing that we kind of set a goal... And it's funny because, like, our friends think we're just joking, but I swear, as soon as we have no mortgage, we're going to save up and we're going to take, there's, we have a few close friends that live really close and we eat at their house every single month. Like, we take turns alternating and there's four other, four other uh, friends. So, there's basically two other couples, right? And, uh... I pretty much said, you know what, we're going to take them on a cruise, you know. <laughs> All expenses paid, you know. How cool would that be, you know. As soon as you get rich enough, you can start taking your friends on cruises and stuff, you know. That's, you know, kind of sounds like a pretty cool idea. What's up, j -Bo? Long time no see. Check out my new uh, center console I just made. These guys got to see me button up the uh, the cushions. I bet J-Bo knows what those are. Those were for my front rear uh, axle driver's side, I think. Believe it or not, that top nut wasn't even attached. It was so worn out. There's not even any threads on it anymore. It was just jiggling around in the axle housing. But believe it or not, the lock ring and that washer were still on. Yeah, yeah, the axle nut. That one wasn't even on, dude. It was just sitting on top of the whatever, the axle or whatever. It was just sitting there. It wasn't even threaded on. Like, you're so funny. <laughs> you know, we were actually talking about that, Blake. Instead of doing like, we were talking about where we're going to go on a cruise. And we were thinking maybe Disneyland or something. Because, so, we we got two kids. And then one of our other friends, they got two kids. and They got one kid and two, and the twins. Right? So, they got three kids total. Yeah, it's just sheet metal. It's uh, probably one size bigger than 18 gauge, probably 16 gauge, I want to say. 16 gauge steel. This is what the old one was, and it was just cracked right there. And the cushions were right here and right here. And every time I put my arm on that to lean over, it would just get worse and worse and worse. You know? So I thought it was time to... And there was also a small crack right there you can see. Let's see. Come on, focus. Right there. But it's just this cheap plastic. So basically how I made this was I took this, I set it upside down on a piece of steel, right? And then I, you know, went like this, drew a line across, put it down, rolled it up, and then drew a line across, and then folded it over, drew a line across, and then did the same like that. And then I had a big square piece. And then what I did to bake these bends is I took my angle grinder, right? And I just scratched it, right? And then I stuck it in the vise and bent it right where the cut was. It wasn't cut all the way through, just enough to, you know, make it easier to bend and make it bend in a straight line. And then, of course, on where the corners are, I had to cut a square off. So I could fold it up and weld it. On the front... The front is kind of funky because, so, 
you guys may not be able to see this in the video, but it's kind of angled out a little bit, right? It's kind of angled out a little bit. And that's because it has a cushion on the side, right? And so it can't be 100% square straight up and down because I wouldn't be able to get this new console on. So I had to weld in right here. You can't see it, but there's a little triangle I welded on there. Yeah, you can't even see it with the reflection of the paint. Well, there you go. You can kind of see a little bit of the difference in the metal. I welded in to a triangle right there and a triangle on this side too, right there. Just so it kind of bulges out a little bit so it's easier to get this on. But yeah. I was also thinking it might be kind of cool if I loosen this nut up and swing this to one side and then I could use it as a pencil holder. I don't know. Be kind of cool. Not that I carry pencils everywhere, but. I think I did a pretty good job. I'm happy with it. I think it's way cooler than this plastic one. This thing is just waiting to break. I mean, you can see right there. For those of you that are not just joining, this was actually glued. There's like a piece of metal back there and it was glued at one point, but it was broke. So. Anyways, guys. <sighs> Super excited. Super excited to put that on. I got some videos coming out. I just installed a cab light on the pickup. Check that out. The pickup, when I bought it, didn't have a cab light. I mean, they all have that cab light in the back on the top. Except for when they reupholstered the thing, they just deleted it. Like, they didn't even put one in. So, there's no cab light. I installed one of those. I also installed a subwoofer. Took it out of my old pickup and put it in my new pickup. And it is sweet that's in the same video it's kind of a longer video but i didn't feel like breaking it up so i installed them both at the same time so and then i still haven't done that video about me before dump trucking i i got the slideshow already i just need to do a voiceover on it but i don't know i'm not really big into those kind of videos like the slideshow ones i don't know what do you guys think my buddy just texted me it's got uh the odometer says sixty-five thousand, J jaybo there's no hundred thousand mile marker though there's no hundred thousand digit early home videos yeah <laughs> we do have some of those early home videos but they're still on VA VHS my grandpa hasn't converted them to you know DVD or CD or digital yet so I may do that actually I may do that go back and see if we have any videos Yeah, maybe. That's what I was saying, Blake. That's exactly what I was saying. Probably put like a little square piece of rubber for the for the phone. I was also thinking of making like a little, kind of like probably this tall. You know, same height as the uh, same height as the pads. Making a square with two tabs on the inside and just screwing them on. And it'd be like a little square where I could set my phone in or something. But yeah.